It's a pretty extraordinary collection in this auction. I'm, I'm so impressed. Everything from the Icarus from Planet of the Apes to the Enterprise from Star Trek, um, uh, from the Greg Jean collection. Um, it, it's, it's such a walk down memory lane. I'm just uh, loving seeing all this amazing, amazing artifacts of our pop culture life. Um, and it's so great because Hollywood, Planet Hollywood was such an iconic brand, uh, you know, certainly for me, I mean, you know, coming from New York, I mean, I, when I first encountered Planet Hollywood, it was like as close as I ever imagined being to Hollywood um, and, and, and seeing these things because you would sit there, people don't remember at dinner, you'd just be looking around like, oh my God, is that, what is that from? Is that from Rambo? Oh, that's from Gremlins. And you just, the whole meal. I mean, you know, when I did my first movie, Free Enterprise with William Shatner and Eric McCormick, you know, I had two dreams. This is funny, most people, they want to become the, multi-millionaires and they want the films to be a huge success. I had two dr dreams with that movie. One was that I would um, have it reviewed on Siskel and Ebert. And the other, and this is crazy, that was some of the stuff, the movie, the costumes, the props would end up in Planet Hollywood. Now here's the funny thing. We were never reviewed on Siskel and Ebert, which was crazy and that's a whole nother story. But when Bill Shatner and me and the director went to Can the Cannes Film Festival, um, with Free Enterprise. We had a huge press event at Planet Hollywood Cannes where Bill Shatner got up on stage and gave the jacket that he wore in Free Enterprise to Planet Hollywood Cannes. And for me to say it was one of the highlights of my life would not be exaggerating, which made me look, made me look pathetic and really like I've had a terrible life, but I've had a pretty good life. But that was one of the highlights of my life was having Bill. And it was funny because he gets up on stage and it was this vintage World War uh, uh, One fly uh, bomber jacket. And he talked about how it had belonged to the great um, uh, flying ace, Eddie Rickenbacker. And um, it, was, it was, he bought it in a thrift shop and how it had come from the beaches of France and now he bought it in Los Angeles and we're in this movie and now he's bringing it back to the beaches of France and he steps off stage and everybody's riveted because it's Bill Shatner telling this incredible story. Like, Bill, we had no idea. And he goes, I made it up. And it was like, oh my God. He is a master storyteller. I mean, it was like, it was such vintage Shatner. I mean, this is when he was walking along the corset saying, and he would look, we were, he was being interviewed for E! and we were trailing him being interviewed for E! and he, he just looks at the beach, at the corset, goes, topless, topless is good. And uh, it was just uh, funny, but we gave a bunch of stuff from Free Enterprise, and it's too bad because I wish it was in this auction now and I was getting the money for it, but he, we gave a bunch of stuff to Planet Hollywood, including his jacket, which was in the Planet Hollywood can. And every time I would go back to Cannes, to the Cannes Can Film Festival for different things, or, or MIP, or when he said, I would want to go to Planet Hollywood to see our old Captain, you know, William Shatner bomber jacket that he had given to uh, Planet Hollywood. Because it was around during a very pivotal point. It was when I wanted to be a filmmaker. I was a journalist and I was just getting into the business. And like Planet Hollywood was like my conduit, my, my entree into the biz. Oh, it's a restaurant that's about Hollywood, right? And Plus, I loved appetizers, and you know, I, they had great, still do, and uh, they had the best appetizers at Planet Hollywood, and you're just surrounded by all these movies you love, because, you know, it wasn't, yeah, they'd have Pretty Woman or some of this stuff, but it was mostly genre. It was a ton of Star Trek, and Planet of the Apes, and Galactica, and all this really cool stuff, and whenever Planet Hollywood you went into, it was usually something different. So it's like, oh, this is Star Wars, or this is, you know, um, this is Gremlins, or this is E.T. And, and so it was always an adventure to go to these different Planet Hollywoods. And there was, you know, and they were in New York, and they were in Vegas, and they were in Hollywood. And, they, you know, they were everywhere. It wasn't like walking into Applebee's, right? Who cares? Then the food was terrible, and it was Applebee's. But Planet Hollywood, there was something magical about it.